Hello friends, a very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome back once again on the YouTube channel of Baiju's Exam Prep. I'm Gaurav Gupta and today I'll take you through this session for Tisnet Maths. Maths and Logical Reasoning section is one very important session in uh, section in Tisnet which has uh, uh, 30 questions in total. So today we are going to look at uh, and today we are going to look forward for the preparation of this particular section of Tisnet examination. So friends, a very, very, very good afternoon to all of you. I hope I'm clearly audible and visible. <coughs> good afternoon, everyone. Zatitude. Hello. How are you? Manifestation. Hello. Hello, everyone. So friends, in my last session uh, for Testnet, uh, basically the session, uh, like it was... Uh, left incomplete in between uh, basically in the last session we have seen uh, uh, the weightage of uh, different types of questions the weightage of different sections uh, across uh, testnet now today in this session we are going to discuss in detail about uh, uh, different questions so yes we are actually going to solve questions uh, uh, which will be of uh, the level of difficulty of testnet examination so hello everyone hello welcome back once again on the youtube channel of Burju's exam prep i'm gaurav gupta and like i just mentioned today we are going to discuss uh, the maths and logical reasoning section of uh, testnet so this is the series of sessions in which we'll be solving uh, some of the questions uh, uh, which will uh, like which have already appeared in testnet in the previous years or uh, which will match the level of difficulty of testnet examination all right so let's quickly start with this session so this is uh, the agenda of this session so today we'll be actually solving uh, quant and logical reasoning questions so in in all uh, there will be somewhere around 14 15 questions and uh, will be quickly solving all these questions and this session will definitely help you in uh, the revision for uh, testnet all right so let's quickly start first question will appear on your screen now before i'll show you the first question i want each and every one of you to be taking uh, to to basically take out uh, some rough sheets one or two sheets will be enough a piece of pen all right please take it out uh, naman is asking sir how to go for gk naman you know uh, uh, common question hai is moment pe aake ki yaar hame gk ke liye kya karna chahiye uh, your mentors your faculty members uh, must be telling you since last so many months to keep studying gk to read some newspapers magazines to read some uh, monthly magazines fortnightly magazines but hum to karte hi nahi na ye sab cheeze so uh, towards the <clears throat> last few days if you want to prepare for gk so it will always be better to just buy an yearbook uh, like uh, just a manorma yearbook hai ya fir koi bhi aisa ek gk ka book just me like you will find uh, the questions of gk the topics of gk in the concise manner and uh, uh, the duration uh, should range uh, from last uh, 8 to 10 months, right? So just quickly buy a book from the market and uh, make sure that you devote at least one and a half to two hours on uh, reading the current affairs from that particular book every day up till your uh, testnet examination, all right? Uh, manifestation, you're saying uh, I've completed GK till June month. So, yeah, June month tak to enough nahi hoga. So, I would suggest that September, October tak ka bhi GK ek bar uh, study kar lo. And uh, I believe that will be enough if you have completed GK up till the month of June. Okay. Theek hai. Sir, I'm studying GK since two days, not getting time for quant and VA. Manifestation, basically quant and VA will not be so difficult as far as uh, this examination is concerned. So I can be sure about quant and logical reasoning uh, from which uh, you, will, you may find 30 questions. So the level of difficulty is very low. So if you have prepared previously for different examinations, then uh, you don't have to take out a lot of time when it comes to quant and logical reasoning. Similarly, the same thing goes for verbal. All right, so you must focus on GK because in testnet you will have uh, a separate sectional cutoff for only GK section. Kisi or section mein sectional cutoff nahi hai, GK ke section mein sectional cutoff hai. So please do take care about uh, GK section in case you want to get a call from uh, HR program of uh, testnet. All right, okay. 
आयुषी ऐसा कुछ नहीं है कि कुछ देर देर विल बी सम फिक्स नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम करंट अफेयर्स बट आउट ऑफ फोर्टी क्वेश्चन दैट अपीयर्स इन दिस सेक्शन आई से दैट समवे अराउंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव क्वेश्चन में अपीयर फ्रॉम करंट अफेयर्स ठीक है सो मेक श्योर कि करंट अफेयर्स अच्छे से करके जाओ देर इज अक्शनल कट ऑफ ऑफ फोर्टीन मार्क्स इफ यू आर फ्रॉम जनरल ई डब्ल्यू एस और ए एफ कैटेगरी ऑल राइट आर्म फोर्सेस कैटेगरी से हो तो फोर्टीन मार्क्स का सेक्शनल कट ऑफ होता है लाइक विच इज लाइक अ वेरी गुड मार्क्स आउट टू स्कोर आउट ऑफ फोर्टीन सो मेक श्योर दैट यू आर टेकिंग केयर अबाउट दिस सेक्शन प्रॉपरली ओके चलिए नाउ विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम लेट इज स्टार्ट एंड I will be looking forward for a proper response from each and every one of you. We'll be solving somewhere around 15 questions in this section, in this session. Okay, so make sure that you're solving and posting your answers uh, the way you have been doing in my previous sessions. All right. So first question on your screen now. Question says that if the cost price of 20 articles is equal to the selling price of 25 articles, then the percentage profit or loss. that will be made in this transaction will be how much come on if the cost price of 20 articles is equal to the selling price of 25 articles then what will be the profit or loss made in this whole transaction All right, Ayushi, the first one to answer twenty percent, good. But Ayushi, will it be twenty percent profit or twenty percent loss? This is what you have to clarify others as well. So tell me which option will be the answer. Option A, B, C, or D. All right, all right. So most of you are saying option D. So let's uh, quickly start and uh, solve this question. Now, I I basically have two ways of solving this. Let's uh, go with the easiest way. So cost price of twenty articles. I'll assume that it is equal to one hundred. All right. So cost price of one article will become five. Now this cost price of twenty articles, which is rupees one hundred, is also equal to the selling price of twenty five articles. So selling price of one article will become four. So cost price is five, selling price is four. So we have a loss of rupee one over the cost price of five multiplied by hundred, and the answer will come out to be twenty percent. Simple as that. ये क्वेश्चन हम ओरली भी कर सकते हैं. Understand that testnet exam में mostly questions जो भी आते हैं like uh, there are thirty questions in this uh, section of maths and logical reasoning and I would say that somewhere around ten to twelve questions तो ऐसे होते हैं जो आप orally भी कर सकते हो okay so if you are good in maths if you are good in quant good in logical reasoning then uh, like somewhere around thirty forty percent of the questions that comes in quant section can be done orally. ओके और बाकी जितने भी क्वेश्चंस होते हैं दे आर आल्सो नॉट नॉट दैट डिफिकल्ट नॉट दैट लेंदी सारे के सारे इसी लेवल के होते हैं लाइक द क्वेश्चंस दैट आई हैव पिक्ड अप फॉर दिस सेशन टुडे दीस क्वेश्चंस आर इदर द एक्चुअल क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम प्रीवियस ईयर पेपर्स ऑफ टेस्टनेट और दे विल मैच द लेवल ऑफ डिफिकल्टी सो आई हैव जस्ट चेंज्ड द नंबर्स टू मेक श्योर दैट यू विल ऑल गेट द एक्चुअल लेवल ऑफ डिफिकल्टी दैट कम्स इन टेस्टनेट एग्जामिनेशन right okay naman 35 questions in 45 uh, 30 questions in 45 minutes uska fayda nahi hoga naman reason being total 100 questions ke liye 100 minutes milte hain fine uh, 40 questions of gk can be taken care of in 20 minutes easily maybe less than 20 minutes then remaining 80 minutes को केयरफुली डिवाइड करना पड़ेगा बिटवीन क्वांट एंड वर्बल सेक्शन सो यस यू कैन डिवोट 40 40 मिनट्स इन बोथ द सेक्शंस ओके और एज पर योर एरिया ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ यू कैन डिवाइड दीज 80 मिनट्स ऑल राइट चलिए सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज 20 परसेंट लॉस एज करेक्टली गिवन बाय ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू लेट्स क्विकली मूव ऑन टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर टू सो स्लाइटली लेंदी बट वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन there are some benches and some students in a classroom if one student sits on one bench 10 students will be left without a bench if two students sit on a bench 10 benches will have no students sitting on them 
what is the ratio of students and the benches in the classroom? Yes, Tahir, official answer key for that. Yes, it's, it's already out. It's been, I believe, two or three days already. Nahin, I believe the response sheet I hear answer keys nahi hai. Okay, so answer for this one. Yes, anyone. Okay, Naman, first one to give an answer. Good. Come on, Pranjal, Mahima, Vengeance, Rajveer, Ayushi, Ranu, Bharat, Zatitude. What will be your answer? I should not be taking so much time for this one. Asansa question hai. Okay, so let me start with the solution, with the discussion. So there are some benches. So let us assume that the number of benches is N. All right. Now we'll be finding the number of students using both the different statements. We'll be finding the number of students. And then we'll equate kar denge. The number of students will come out to be in terms of number of benches. So I'm assuming that there are N benches in the classroom. Now from the first statement, if one student sits on one bench, then 10 students are left without the bench. All right, so one student per bench, so number of students N, and without the bench, there are 10 students. So total number of students, total number of students in the class will be equal to N plus 10. Okay, the first statement, over. Now according to second statement, if two students sit on a bench, if two students sit on a bench, then 10 benches will be left vacant. So there are a total of N benches and 10 benches are left vacant. So that means the students are sitting on N minus 10 benches and every bench has two students. So this expression twice of N minus 10 will also give you the number of students. Okay, so N plus 10 or twice of n minus 10 will be number of students. I can equate them and find out the value of n. So n ka value kitna jaga, it will come out to be 30. Okay. Now if value of n is 30, that means number of benches is 30, then the number of students will be equal to n plus 10 or twice of n minus 10, whatever, whichever way you can uh, find out the number of students. So number of students will be equal to n plus 10, that is equal to 40. Okay, so simple. I have got the number of benches and the number of students. Now, what ratio do I have to find out? I have to find out the ratio of students and benches, not the other way around. So number of students is 40 and number of benches is 30. So the ratio will be 40 is to 30 or 4 is to 3. And yes, a correct answer given by almost all of you. All right. So simple question it was 4 is to 3 is the correct answer. Let's move on to the next question, question number three. <clears throat> what is the eighth term of the given sequence? Very simple sequence hai aapke saamne. Quickly give me the eighth term of this sequence. The series is five, seven, 11, 19, and so on. All right, Zatitude. Let's see if option C is correct answer or not. Aman also says option C. Okay, 
what is the logic behind this uh, series what is the logic that has been used in this series so the logic is very simple straightforward asan abhi tak to answer aa jana chahiye tha okay so there is a difference of 2 here again a difference of 4 net the difference of 8 all right so the difference is 2 4 8 so next difference should be 16 then 32 then 64 and then 128 so these are the differences there is no need to find out fifth sixth seventh term i can directly find out the eighth term all right so 16 32 64 and 128 in sab ko add kar lete hain to yahan pe 160 uh 220 220 240 so 240 add karna hai 19 plus 240 will give me the eighth term so 240 plus 19 that is 259 should be the correct answer guys 259 should be the correct answer the correct answer should be option d not option c i hope the students who have uh, given a different answer have understood what mistake they have committed all right also also there is another way of doing this question now since i can see that the difference between the terms is the power of 2 so i can write every term i can write every term i'll write the first few terms i can write each of these terms as a power of 2 so 2 raised to the power 1 plus 3 this is the 2 raised to the power 2 plus 3 this is 2 raised to the power 3 plus 3 2 raised to the power 4 plus 3 so the nth term of this uh, series the nth term of this series will become 2 raised to the power n plus 3 All right. अब मुझे एर्थ टर्म फाइंड आउट करना है तो एर्थ टर्म क्या हो जाएगा टू रेस्ट टू दी पावर एट प्लस थ्री दैट इज टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी सिक्स प्लस थ्री विच इज टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी नाइन All right. Since uh, the difference between any two consecutive terms is the power of two, so power of two that is two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and so on. So I can write every term in terms of uh, a power of two. All right. So two raised by n plus three. Uh, will be the general term and 259 is the correct answer for this one all right so guys jaldi nahi uh, we have plenty of time for every question so aram se 40 45 seconds you can spend on every question and uh, please cross check your answer before you'll mark okay chaliye start karte hain next question number 4 slightly lengthy but again an easy question bahut easy question hai so try not to commit mistake in this one in a national park 150 tigers were caught tagged with ele uh, electric markers and then released a week later 50 tigers were captured in the same national park of these 50 tigers it was found that 5 had been tagged with the electronic markers earlier already they were tagged if the percentage of tagged tigers in the second sample approximates the percentage of tagged tigers in the national park and if no tiger had either left or entered the national park over the preceding week then what is the approximate number of tigers in the national park so it's a slightly lengthy question language bahut simple hai straight forward hai and there is no calculation at all a straight forward question All right, Naman, attitude, nice, Bharat, very good. Simple, na? Is type of questions come in test? Mein. <laughs> okay, Ayushi, nice. So generally, what people will do is uh, they'll they'll uh, leave this question thinking that yeah, lengthy question has time, zada lagega, but they don't know that uh, uh, it's it's just uh, the time that you will take to read the question. Will be the time taken to solve the question. So question to read करते करते ही answer पता लग जाएगा and you can easily mark your answer. So if I look at this number, a week later fifty tigers were captured and out of these fifty five had been already tagged. Fine. So five is what percentage of fifty? It is ten percentage of fifty. Now this percentage 
So they are saying that if the percentage of tagged tigers in the second sample, so this was the second sample, earlier 150 were caught, okay, and next time, second time, 50 were taken, okay. So in the second sample, if this percentage of tagged tigers, it gives you, it approximates the percentage of total tagged tigers in the national park, and no tiger was added or removed in the preceding week, then what is the total number of tigers in the national park, right? So 10% is the percentage of tigers which are tagged in total. So in total, we tagged 150. So 150 is 10 percentage of total number of tigers. So if 150 is 10 percentage of total number of tigers, then the total number of tigers should be equal to 1500. And yes, option D is the correct answer. Okay, yes, it is a Zach type story question, but level of difficulty is way less than Zach. <laughs> okay, so correct answer here is option D, that is 1500. Okay, let's move on and look at question number five. Question number five, very simple, straightforward question of linear equations. We have done this type of question many a times in our life. So the incomes are in the ratio 9 is to 7, expenses are in the ratio 4 is to 3. Each of them saves 3000, then find the difference between their incomes. Uh, Sejal, yaar, frankly speaking, nothing is enough for GK, but uh, if you can finish the entire yearbook, then uh, I believe you will be at least able to clear the sectional cutoff for general awareness section. Okay, so uh, Sejal, you also know that yaar, nothing is enough when it comes to GK section. All right, answer for question number five, anyone? So incomes of these two persons are in the ratio nine is to seven. So I'll assume their incomes as nine X and seven X. All right, now I'll not uh, basically take two variables. I'll just keep my equations in one variable. Okay, so I'll be using income minus saving is equal to expenditure. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait. So income minus saving. I had expense like diya tha. So income minus saving is equal to expenditure. This is uh, the relation that I'll be using between the three of them. Okay. So incomes assuming as 9x and 7x. If I subtract the savings. So saving done by each of them is 3000. So I'll get their expenses. Now the ratio of their expenses is given as 4 upon 3. Now, you also may do this question by using two variables. So, you can use the ratio of the incomes 9 is to 7. So, assuming the incomes as 9x and 7x and the expenses as 4y and 3y. As they bhi kar sakte ho. Hai? But I am using one variable only. Okay. Now, cross multiply karte hai. Uh, 27, 28. So, the value of x will come out to be um, 12 minus 9000 okay 12000 minus 9000 that is 3000 so the value of x is 3000 now we have to find out the difference between their income now their incomes were 9x and 7x so the difference between their incomes 9x or 7x may difference kitna hoga it will be equal to 2x and uh, if x is 3000 2x will be equal to 6000 so the correct answer here should be option c that is 6000 Sadly, only six students have given a correct answer. Kya kar rahe ho yaar? Khali baithe ho. Solve bhi kar lo. Revision ho jayega. Thoda sa speed increase ho jayega tum logon ka. Theek hai na? So if you are sitting in this sessions, don't, don't just sit and uh, like uh, watch this session as a news channel. No, I'm not teaching you GK. I'm teaching you quant. 
in fact i'm not teaching you i'm just conducting the session so that you will revise a few things and uh, your speed will be increased theek hai na so i want answer for this one from every student theek hai make sure all the students who are watching this session will calculate this the present ages of shibu and sohail are in the ratio 4 is to 5 8 years from now the ratio of their ages will be 5 is to 6 find the difference of their ages a similar question any answer okay sonal sonal has given the first answer stagel nice okay so 4x and 5x assuming their ages assuming their present ages 4x and 5x now 8 years from now 8 years from now that means uh, after 8 years theek hai so after 8 years the ages of each of these persons will increase by 8 The ratio will become five is to six. Just need to calculate the value of x. X का value कितना आ जाएगा? Twenty five minus twenty four is x. ठीक है. Forty eight minus forty is eight. So x is equal to eight. ये पता लग गया. Now we have to find the difference of their ages. Difference of their present ages, obviously. So four x and five x इसका difference कितना होगा? X. And we already have the value of x. Correct answer is yes. It is option D. That is eight. ठीक है. Next question, question number seven. What is the probability that a leap year has fifty-three Sundays and fifty-three Mondays? Oh, a question of probability based on calendars. So, what is the probability that a leap year has fifty-three Sundays and fifty-three Mondays? is the probability 1 that means the every time there will be 53 sundays and 53 mondays or the probability 0 or it can be 2 by 7 or 1 by 7 let's see who will give me a correct answer for this one all right ayushi says 2 by 7 satitude 2 by 7 2 by 7 2 by 7 sabne 2 by 7 answer de diya nice 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 good okay chalo check karte hain theek hai Now we all know about a leap year. Leap year has three hundred and sixty-six days in total. Look at the top left side of your screen. Three hundred and sixty-six days in total. That means fifty-two weeks and two extra days. All right. Now fifty-two weeks here. So in these fifty-two complete weeks, there will be fifty-two Sundays, fifty-two Mondays, fifty-two Tuesdays, and so on. All right. So if I have fifty-two weeks. already i have 52 sundays and 52 mondays theek hai now these two extra days can be either of the two days in the week no they cannot be either of the two days they can be either of the two consecutive days in the week right so ab ye jo do extra days hai inki baat ho rahi hai so these two extra days can be ab main sari ki sari possibilities likh deta hu so i'm writing the sample space and then you can easily find your answer okay so 52 sundays and 52 mondays to ho chuke hain ab ye jo extra days hain right so i'm writing them so this can be sunday and monday this can be monday and tuesday tuesday wednesday wednesday thursday thursday friday friday saturday saturday sunday can i say that these can be the seven possibilities yes or no right so either these two extra days ye jo bache hue hain they can be sunday monday or monday tuesday or tuesday wednesday or wednesday thursday thursday friday friday saturday saturday sunday these can be the seven possibilities now out of these seven possibilities how many favorable cases do we have now will you like to change your answers based on that now i need 
53 Sundays and 53 Mondays. I need these two extra days, one of them to be a Sunday and another should be a Monday. So I can say that there is only one favorable case for this one. There is only one favorable case out of these seven favorable cases. So the correct answer will be one upon seven. Now I'll tell you two upon seven answer kab hoga. The same mistake you all have done. Sabne rata hua hai, ye ek set question hai. You all must have done this question in probability. But sabne rata hua tha ki iska to answer 2 by 7 hota hai. Okay, nahi. 2 by 7 is not the answer. Correct answer is 1 by 7. I'll tell you 2 by 7 answer kab hota hai. What will be the language of the question? Okay, now if they're asking, what is the probability that the leap year has 53 Sundays? That's it. Mondays ke baare mein kuch bola hi nahi hua. 53 Sundays. Okay. So now, what is the probability that a leap year has 53 Sundays? So that means, ye jo ek, do extra days bache hai, whatever these two extra days are, one of the days should be a Sunday. Koi bhi ek din Sunday hona chahiye. To favorable cases in that case, in, 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 in that case will be Sunday, Monday ho sakta hai, ya fir Saturday, Sunday. So there will be two favorable cases out of seven. In that case, the answer would have been 2 by 7. But for our question, but for our question, it is 1 by 7. Theek hai na? So, in this case, correct answer is option D. I hope all of you have understood why the answer is 1 by 7 and not 2 by 7. I hope you all have understood. Theek hai? Chal, aage chalte hai. Question number 8. Question number 8. Four different clocks beep after every 25 minutes, 50 minutes, 1 hour, 40 minutes and 2 hour, 5 minutes. If all clocks beep together at 5 a.m., then when will they next beep together? A simple question of uh, LCM. Millie will be doing somewhere around 15 questions. I hope you're not tired. Yes, give me a quick answer for this one. So four different clocks beep after every 25 minutes 50 minutes now 1 hour 40 minutes will be 100 minutes all right and 2 hour 5 minutes will be 125 minutes okay now if all of them beep together at 5 a.m then at what time they will beep together the next okay so 25 minutes, 50 minutes, 100 minutes and 125 minutes, they beep after, after every these many minutes. So together they will beep, together all four of them will beep after a time, which is the LCM of all these four numbers. I mean, charo ka LCM kya hoga? So LCM will be equal to 500. So they all will beep after, they all beep, will beep together after 500 minutes. A 500 minutes ko hours mein convert kar dete hai. So 6 eights of 48, 480. So it will be 8 hours and 20 minutes. And 8 hours and 20 minutes after what time? After 5 a.m. So 5 a.m. may 8 hours 20 minutes add kar do and you will get your answer. The correct answer will be uh, 8 and 5, 13. That means 1, 1, 20 p.m. 1, 20 p.m. the same day will be the correct answer. So option C is the correct answer for question number 8. Yes, Naman, 500 minutes, absolutely correct. Bharat, Pranjal, Zatitude, Sejal, Sonal, all of you are absolutely correct. Good, good. Same set of students are responding. Others are se baithe hai, koi tension nahi hai exam ki. Okay, so question number 9 on your screen. Trigonometry. Important to make the correct figure in this case, in this question. A tree breaks and bends due to heavy storm and now its uh, peak touches the ground making an angle of 30 degrees with it. If the bent part is 20 meter long, then find the original height of the tree in meters. Yeah, 
careful with the figure of this question. All right, Pranjal, first one to give an answer, option B. Now, a tree breaks and bends due to heavy storm. So let's say originally the tree was like this. Okay, originally the tree was like this. I'll call it A, B. Okay. Now, because of heavy storm, the tree breaks from this point. Okay. And uh, the peak touches the ground making an angle of 30 degrees. So it breaks from here and break hone ke baad, it bends and uh, the peak of uh, the tree, it now touches the ground. The tree has fallen like this. So it's a point A tha top pe, ye yaha pe a gaya on the ground and the tree breaks from point C. Hai? Right? So this is the figure of uh, the question. So AC plus BC, AC plus BC will be the total height of the original tree. Now the bend part, the bend part is 20 meters long. That means AC is given as 20 meters. And this angle that is made with the ground is given as 30 degrees. Okay. So 30, 60, 90 degree triangle use karlo or you may use the sign of this 30 degrees. So sign of 30 degrees will be BC upon AC sin 30 degrees ka value kitna hota hai? it is 1 upon 2. Okay. So the length of BC divided by AC which is 20 is equal to 1 upon 2. So length of BC will be equal to 10 units. Alright. So 10 meters will be the length of BC and AC length of AC is already given as 20. So the height of the original tree will be equal to 10 plus 20 that is 30 meters. So the correct answer for this question is 30 meters. Okay? Sahi hai? So I believe some of you have committed mistake, but uh, some of you have also given a correct answer. Okay? So it's dekho, trigonometry ke is type ke questions bhot easy. Hote hai. The only catch is to draw the correct figure. So just the correct figure draw kar liya, just analysis kar liya question ka properly, then you will be easily able to get the final answer. Okay. Chalo, aage chalte hai. That was question number 9. Answer is option D. That is uh, 30 meters. Next question, question number 10. A very simple question of statistics. Median ki knowledge honi chahiye. What is median? And you'll be able to give an answer in less than 30 seconds. The following observations are arranged in ascending order. They are already arranged in ascending order. So the values are 26, 29, 42, 53, x, x plus 2, x plus 5, 75, 82 and 93. These observations are already arranged in ascending order. If the median of uh, the observations is 65, then we have to find out the value of x. Now, what is the median? What is the median in a given set of data? The median is the middle term if the number of terms is odd. This is a catch here. Understand? Listen to, very, listen to it very carefully. So, if all the terms are arranged in ascending order or descending order, then the median of this set of observations is always the middle term if the number of terms is odd. Because if the number of terms is odd, then there will be a single middle term. But in our case, the number of terms is even. So whenever the number of terms is even, then the total number of terms are even here, then there will be two middle terms and the median will be the average of these two middle terms. Okay? 
So in our case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 terms and the fifth term and the sixth term will be the middle terms. Okay. So these are the two middle terms x and x plus 2. Okay. And in dono ka average, if I take the average of these two, then that will give you the median of this data. So average is uh, 65. This is the median. So from here, you can easily find out the value of x. So x plus x plus 2, that is 2x plus 2 is uh, equal to how much? 130. So the value of x will come out to be 130 minus 2, that is 128 divided by 2, which will come out to be 64. So 64 is the correct answer for this one. All right. Yes, that is option C. Next question, question number 11. In a charity show, tickets numbered consecutively from 101 through 350 are placed in a box. What is the probability that a ticket selected at random will have a number with a 100 digit as 2? Quickly give me an answer for this one. The options may confuse you in this case. All right, Bharat says option A. Are you sure, Bharat? Naman also says option A. Chaliye. So, how many tickets are there in total? Pehle ye dekh lete. So, starting from 101 up till 350. The total number of tickets is equal to 250. So this is the first thing that we have got. Mahima, the total number of tickets is 250. It starts from 101. So 101 include karna hai. So starting from 101 up till 350, a total number of tickets, the total number of tickets is 250. Okay. So denominator of my answer should be 250. So option B and option C can be eliminated. Right. Okay. So 250 will be the denominator. Now we have to find out the probability that the number is a three digit number such that the hundredth digit is two. Okay. So hundredth digit two on a So what is the smallest number? So it starts from 200. So 200 is the first number up till 299. So starting from 200 up till 299 these ticket numbers will have 100 digit as 2. So 200 se leke 299 kitne numbers hue again? So these are 100 numbers. Yes. So 200 se start karna hai. You need to include 200 up till 299. So again there are 100 tickets that will uh, basically satisfy the criteria. Theke? So my answer should be 100 divided by 250. Absolutely, Bharat. Good. So 100 divided by 250, that is option A should be the correct answer. All right. Samjay, Renu, Pranjal, do you understand your mistake? Mahima, I hope you all have understood your mistake. Yes. Ranu. All right. Ranu has also changed her answer. Good, good, good. Pranjal, you also would have understood what mistake was committed. It's just basically a counting error that you might have done. Okay, so the correct answer here is option A. And with this, let's move on to question number 12. Find the missing character in the series of alphabets. So A, D, I, dash, Y. The series of alphabets, you have to find out the missing character, missing alphabet. So which of uh, the four options will fill this blank? Simple question here. 
quickly give me an answer. In such type of questions, what I generally do is I write the number equivalence of all the alphabets. Number equivalence yaad hone chahiye and uh, that will uh, like uh, this is the method using which you can easily find the answer. So A stands for 1, then D is 4, this is 9 and Y is 25. Okay, so the relation that, uh, ca that can be established here is all these numbers are perfect squares. So 1, 4, 9 and 25, these are perfect squares. So blank should be filled by the number 16. Okay, 16 ke equivalent. What is uh, the alphabet against 16? So 16 ke against kya hota hai? It is P and the correct answer should be option B. My God. So a lot of you have given a wrong answer. Kisi ne C answer diya hai. Kisi ne... Yes, mostly ne C hi answer diya. Those students ne C answer diya. Otherwise, option B that is P. P is the correct answer. 16. 16 should be the correct answer. Bharat, is it clear? Sonal, I hope I am clear. Okay, I don't know 18 kaise aaya yaar tum logon ka. I don't know 18 R, R to nahi aana chahiye. Even if you look at the difference, uh, the difference here is 3, then 5, then the difference should have been 7 and then 9. So, agar mein differences bhi check karta hoon, to bhi answer yehi aayega. 16, that is P. Okay, so correct answer is option B. That is alphabet P and uh, next question, question number 13 on your screen now. If a cuboidal box has the height, length and width given, then you'll have to find out the total surface area of this cuboid. So quickly, you need to remember the formula for the surface area of a cuboid. So I'll give you a few seconds, 30 seconds. And let's see how many of you remember uh, the formula for the surface area of a cuboid. All right, are you she good? So formula for uh, the surface area, the total surface area is twice of LB plus BH plus LH. Okay, so pairs may multiply kar do. So twice of length into breadth will be 15 into 10. That is 150 plus uh, breadth into height. That is uh, 10 into 20, 200 and then 20 into 15 that is 300 is length into height. Okay, so 200 and 300, 500, 600, 650. 650 into 2, 1300 should be the correct answer for this one. Option A, 1300. Yes, it is the correct answer given by almost all of you. Lovely, good, good everyone. Next question, question number 14. A simple question on probability. In a class of 45 students, 25 are girls. In a test, 30 students scored above 90% marks and 18 of them are girls. A student is selected at random. The probability of selecting a girl scoring above 90% marks will be how much? Yes, simple. So you don't have to do any kind of calculations. A student is selected at random. So that means there are 45 students and a student should be selected from 45 students. So the denominator should be 45, right? So student is selected at random. The probability of selecting a girl who has scored 90% above marks. So 
Out of the total students who have scored above 90 percent marks, it is already given that 18 are girls. Okay, so sample space of 45 and the favorable number of cases will be 18. So 18 upon 45, correct answer should be option A. Okay, orally ho gaya. Yes, Bharat. So I'm genuinely I'm telling you that you will find some questions in testnet exam in maths section which can be done orally right last question for the day how many two digit numbers are divisible by three quickly now i've kept the level of difficulty of today's session uh, slightly on a lower side but this was just a warm-up session and uh, the next set of sessions that i'll be conducting i'll be taking some difficult questions as well okay so how many two digit numbers are divisible by three Quickly give me an answer for this one. All right. So how many two digit numbers are divisible by three? We just need to start by writing the first or the smallest two digit number which is divisible by 3. So the smallest two digit number which is divisible by 3 is uh, 12. And the largest two digit number which is divisible by 3 will be 99. Now all these numbers, all these numbers, all these two digit numbers which are divisible by 3 will be at a gap of 3. So I can use uh, the number of terms in an arithmetic progression. Okay, so formula nth term is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d. Ye formula use kar sakte hai. Nth term, that is the last term which is 99, is equal to a which is 12, the first term. Number of terms n we have to find out and the common difference will be 3. Now upon solving this, you will get the value of n. So 99 minus 12, that is 87 divided by 3, 29 plus 1. The correct answer will be equal to 30. Okay. So 12 se leke 99 tak, we just need to count all these terms. And Sonal, Sonal, please, please don't commit a mistake. No problem, Sonal. Yaar. Answer remove karne ki zarurat nahi hai. You all are students. So you can give me wrong answers. Theak hai? So wrong answer ho sakte hai. But important is to understand the logic. Theak hai? So don't feel bad if you have given a, uh, given a wrong answer. But make sure that you understand the concept properly. Okay. Make sure you understand the concept properly. Okay. Right. Chalo. So, yaha pe 12 se start karna tha up till 99. So, 12 is the first term that we need to include. 12 ko include karna tha up till 99. So, maine kya kiya? If in case I cannot count them so quickly, I can use the formula for arithmetic progression. So, nth term that is 99 is equal to a, a is the first term, plus n minus 1 into d, d is the common difference. So the numbers which are divisible by 3 are 12, 15, 18, 21 and so on up till 99. So they are arithmetic progression at a common difference of 3 and you can calculate them. Okay, okay. so the correct answer here is uh, 30 which is option A, right? Now, JRD is saying, sir, verbal GK mila ke 50 bhi le aay to GK 25 tough padega bohat. To score approx 74-75. Now, verbal and GK mila ke agar 50 agar a jate hai, uh, JRD, then uh, quant mein, even if you can manage 25, then yes, it will be good for you. Okay. Sir, any other method of solving this question? Yes, Mahima. Yes, I have any other. Yes, I have an another method. So basically, uh, what you need to do is you need to start counting from 12 up till 99. Now, basically 12 is the fourth multiple of 3 and 99 is 33rd multiple of 3. So, what do I have to do? 4 se leke 33 tak kitne numbers hote hai ye count karne hai. Right? Starting from 4 up till 33, total kitne numbers hote hain? Starting from 4. Right? So, since I have to start from 4, 
तो दैट मीन्स मुझे फर्स्ट थ्री नंबर्स कंसिडर नहीं करने सो थर्टी थ्री माइनस थ्री दैट इज थर्टी विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर ओके फाइन नमन यू आर आस्किंग व्हाट विल बी द कट ऑफ फॉर लेबर रिलेशंस एंड एनालिटिक्स प्रोग्राम सो आई कैन नॉट टेल यू यार कि अब फॉर फॉर दिस ईयर व्हाट विल बी द कट ऑफ ओके राइट सो नहीं ये नहीं बता सकते प्रांजुल यू आर आस्किंग एस सी मेच आर डी और टेस्ट व्हाट डू थिंक बेटर चॉइस नाउ प्रांजुल इफ यू आर लुकिंग अहेड फॉर एच प्रोग्राम फाइन आई एम टॉकिंग ओनली अबाउट एच प्रोग्राम देन आई वुड गो फॉर टेस्ट ऑल राइट this will be a better option but it is only for hrm program not for any other program which book to refer for static gk ayushi uh, static gk ke liye bhai ab manorama yearbook hai so manorama yearbook mein aapko current affairs mil jayenge but for static gk understand uh, the the syllabus of tests okay so in my previous session i have mentioned i have discussed about what are the different areas from which the questions can be asked so accordingly you can google uh, those type of questions so there is no separate book that you need to consider so let's say if i'll talk about uh, uh, some awards or books or authors right so like ab jitne bhi ab duniya ki jitni bhi books hai ab sare ke sare authors to nahi pata kar sakte hum right so make sure that you are just looking at the books of those authors which have uh, which have been in the news in the last one one and a half year okay so ye cheez agar karoge to better rahega ankit uh, i cannot tell you which program you should select because it totally depends on your uh, area of interest but generally talking about this hrm program is their flagship program uh the 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 placements for hr program are better than uh, odcl program right so in case you don't have any specific area of interest i would like you to go for hrm program but abhi to exam bhi dena baki hai so as a preference you can fill hrm program as your first preference okay all right fine so that is all from my side for today's session naman uh, i'll be conducting a session in which uh, i'll be talking about the cutoffs of uh, different programs so frankly yaar i'm really sorry right now i don't remember the cutoff for uh, uh, this program for tis theek hai for the last year i'm i'm really sorry but definitely i'll look into it and uh, we'll conduct a separate session on that i hope that will help you okay so friends that's all from my side any student who want to uh join any program any comprehensive program for cat 2023 preparation so you can uh, have a look at uh, the details of uh, one such program that is offered at byju's exam prep so you can be a part of this you can enroll using the link that is given in the uh, in the description also how to manage cat preparation with job and studies a student uh, like a session uh, well built for the students will be preparing who are preparing for mba entrance examinations for the upcoming session right so uh, this is a session that will be taken by shrinivas sir on 14th of january 2023 lot of us are confused yaar how to prepare for uh, cat and other mba entrance examinations uh, when we have to cope up with our job or our studies so please be a part of this session if in case you are struggling for the preparation of cat all right okay now all india open mock for cmat 2023 will be live starting from 21st of january and it will be live up till 29th of june so do register for this examination the link is given in the description so that's all from my side my dear friends have a wonderful day you can follow us on these uh, social media platforms please do like this session uh like some of you who are already there please do press the like button if you haven't done it up till now and uh, wait for my upcoming sessions on testnet and cmat so have a wonderful day thank you very much for being a part of this session bye bye